How is it going, everyone? It is Monday, January 29th, 2024, and this is the video for today. So, as always, we're going to start with the market on a longer term time frame. We're going to look at what is going on today, what's going to come up for this week, and then we are going to uh, look at the picks from the last video, and I will give a pick for this video. So, First, market on a longer term basis. Fundamentally, right, nothing has changed. Things are still going. This is not going to change and flip flop every single day. We're still bullish fundamentally. We're still bullish technically. Now, on a shorter term time frame, we see that after this breakout over here, the market has trickled up and it's kind of holding its own. It's it's rubbing up against some resistance over here around 489. We have mega cap tech earnings coming up this week. We got a lot of stuff on Tuesday, a lot of stuff on Thursday. We got ADP. We have ISM manufacturing. We have unemployment. We have FOMC. Huge news week today. So this is going to make a big move for the market. Either are we going to go up or we're going to go down. I'm still bullish on a longer term. So my longer term spy swing, which I'm over here. I took some profits actually yesterday over here. I took... Uh, I, I had three, I guess, uh, I added it to it twice. So I had a 3x position. And then I took off uh, one third of that over here. Um, and I may take off another third uh, today just to de-risk a little bit more going into the FOMC. So I only have a little bit on. And then I can reload on a dip or I can buy a breakout and take my gains over there. <clears throat> so that's really what I'm looking at for my longer term uh, plays. If I'm a shorter term swing trader, I'm taking profits into this market compression as it's doing nothing. And I am looking to reload on this next bounce. We know that the market goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. It has this pullback, one step down, pullback, one step down, two steps up. So shorter term, as I mentioned before, we're, co we're kind of compressing over here. If we look at the price action over the last couple of days, you can see it's pretty garbage. We have this big gap up. We established, we filled in this gap here on uh, the 24th, and then we've kind of been trading in the sideways range. Slight bullish bias, as you can see, but the price action is compressing. For every buyer, there is a seller. For every seller, there's a buyer. There's an equilibrium going on right now, and there's no market momentum or direction really in our favor. So. <clears throat> you're not going to take any big swing longs. You're definitely not going to take any swing shorts. That's picking a top. Um, but there are opportunities to take shorter term moves, let's say overnight moves maybe, um, or shorter term day trades on very strong stocks. You need excellent relative strength, excellent R volume, excellent momentum because the stock is going to have to do all the work and then you set passive targets. So this is the week. The last few days are the week to do Day trades, small size, very, very high quality picks. I think there's a couple days where I didn't even trade anything. I didn't even take anything last week. I just closed positions. So that's kind of the tone for today. You can see the market gapped up. Complete chop fest. Tried to push up higher. Strong red candle. No follow through. Higher low. Double bottom over here. Market rallied up here. We managed to stack some green candles, but the volume is absolutely atrocious. You can see the wicks and tails on each lot of dojis move back here. Any red candle just changes the characteristic of this. Now, my bias for today, and we're going to see if this happens. The market does make a move higher, and then when it can't break out of the range, it gets flushed lower, and then it reestablishes itself back in the range. So my feeling is kind of the same, where we're going to try to break out over here, we clearly don't have the momentum in terms of price action and volume to actually break out of this range and the range of the prior day high, which is coming up over there. And I'll put in the low as well. I'll save that. So it doesn't have the momentum to break out. What I think is gonna happen here, slap down, we're holding view app. We're going to come back here. It'll be a double top. And then on that double top, more bullish specs will bail. Some shorts will pile on and we'll get that next move lower. So that's what I'm feeling. We'll see if I'm right. I could be completely wrong here. 
Um, but that's kind of what I'm thinking here. It's unlikely that this becomes a trend day going into all the new statements. It just doesn't seem like that's something that the institutions would want to do. Now, one thing I'm going to keep an eye on here is uh, VXX. So if that the last couple of times it had a drop, it was climbing higher. You can see that now, though, it's actually coming a lot lower. Um, so that actually changes my bias a little bit. Maybe there's a bit higher chance of that dropout because there's no huge spike of VIX calls that are being bought. So market bias for today, um, neutral to slightly bullish, I guess, right now, given just the higher term price action and the market components. Uh, tech was a little bit bullish. Finance was a little bit weak today. Oil was pretty much down. Um, the market components were slightly bullish. The market context is pretty neutral in the short term. And I guess also say slightly bullish in this wide sloping channel. So given that and the longer term market bias, um, if you were to day trade, I think the long side would give you a little bit more room, a little bit more opportunity, I would say. But there are picks to do on the short side as well. So we'll see what the market does over here. Let's go over the picks from the last video. All right. So my pick was Ally. And you can see that Ally is down today. So if you got in yesterday, you were taking a little bit of heat on that position. But that's okay because we know that this stock is not something that shoots off to the races. It's sort of a steady grinder. So as long to me as this breakout holds over here, we should see some nice relative strength. We should start to inch higher uh, and we have room to this high minus trend line coming up over here. So if you bought it out over here, let's say um, you got it to close 37.62, you'd probably hold it AVWAP, so $1.60 on the downside and you have definitely about $1.60 or an ATR of room on the upside but at around, yeah, 39-ish. Uh, so look at the stock, right? A couple of red candles, inches up higher, pops up, pops up. So um, to me, this is a steady grinder. Suggested the gains. I would not be too worried. And I wouldn't add to it given the market news, but it would hold it through the pullback. HLT we're also holding from the last time here. You can see that it moved up higher, came back down, tested this level here and now it's found support. You can see that it's found support because it's gaining relative strength when the market's been not really doing that much. So again, HLT has a couple of red days, right? Chops around and then starts to grind up higher. It's also one that I would stick into. Now my actual positions from last week, the only one that I took profits on today was FTNT. You can see with FTNT, there is this resistance here. So um, I took half profits around here uh, on the last market day. And then today I wanted to see it be able to get higher. It couldn't. We know the market's kind of stalling out, not a lot of headroom. So I took at an order at 66.50 and that got filled in. So took a tiny profit on that trade. Uh, wasn't what I wanted ideally from here. I was aiming, you could see somewhere at the $68 level, but Market didn't pan out. Stock didn't really pan out that much. Um, it's made a pretty decent run. It's been grinding up higher. Um, there are some earnings next week. A lot of big market news. Let me take the small win on a stock that I wasn't totally right on. Market conditions are changing short term. Let's see what happens. And I can always get back in on that trade. Other positions here. I'm still in JPM. Uh, also grinding here. May pull back a little bit to this 8 EMA and then launch up. Um, at this level right over here. So broke through that a little bit weak today, but I only I think I only still have a one quarter position on the stock. I did not add to it yesterday because the market's not moving higher. I want to see the stock move higher and the market move higher. So I have the confidence to add to the trade. When that is not happening, I am not adding to the trade. So absolute worst case scenario in this stock tanks, right? I take a loss on a tiny position versus adding uh, to a not so good position. <laughs> okay, Airbnb. 
Um, Airbnb was pretty nice. I took a lot on this yesterday or last Friday and it did not pan out. Um, you can see it's pretty much flat over here. Um, not really doing too much today. It hit this trend line. Looks like it's digesting some of the move that happened on the 26th. So my put credit spread at the 131 level is in great, great shape. That's going to expire this week. And uh, I anticipate I should get a full credit on here. Um, Airbnb would basically have to drop more than, I don't know, 20 bucks in four days. So that's a pretty big move it would have to do. Um, and assuming that's like the most bearish possible case. So um, I am liking Airbnb over here. Let's take a look at some of these alerts that are popping up. Z, I had placed one. Um, Zillow has a little bit of time for earnings, breaching through this high plus trend line over here. Some pretty decent price action today on Zillow. Steadily moving up higher. Uh, making a nice little bull flag here. Um, also been a steady grinder. Also been a steady grinder, gaining relative strength. Um, volume is not super great today. So I wouldn't... If, if you absolutely want to take Willow, I would do a very small position. But it's not something that I'd overload on given the market context. It's just not good enough. I want to see more volume. Nice price action, not the volume that I wanted to see. So I'm going to put an alert here. So how would I how would I know that they get some volume? Well, what if I put in a real relative volume alert on an M30? So when it has that, okay, then I know some volume is coming in to the stock. Um Another alert that went off, CLSK. So here's, an, here's a reason why you set pullbacks. I saw the stock earlier in the morning, and this is what it was doing. Let, let's, let's zoom back here in time to 11.25. So here's the market 11.25. Here's the stock 11.25. You see it's absolutely shooting up. Really nice volume, really steady price action. Broke above the 50 SMA. Had some room to the AV app E. So I thought, okay, well, this has a decent potential to be a day trade. Um, but you know what? Let me wait for a pullback, right? I don't want to chase this momentum stock. So I said, I, I actually said a whole bunch of alerts just to test out what's going to work. We see I got a couple of them uh, over here. I got an SMI bullish alert. So um, looks like it's finding some support at the 50 SMA, but this retracement is super deep. You can see the stacked red candles while the market's moving up, mind you. So clearly it looks like there was some resistance near the AV Wappy um, or maybe some other horizontal level at this time. If I were to draw a line here, perhaps that is a resistance point on this stock. So. Here's your level rejected off that. Could you still enter it if it crosses view app and has an LRSI cross? Sure, but I would be looking, be more inclined to see a double top than a new high. It just does not have the price action I want. So that's why you set alerts. Don't care um, about uh, CLSK. All right, so let's look at another trade I did today. Etsy, this was a pure Momo spec trade. So. Etsy, super strong relative volume, and you can see the stack green candles on heavy volume. I thought, all right, let me try to get in on Etsy over here, and let's see, just let's just see what happens, right? I this is a terrible D1 chart, terrible M5 chart, except this move here on this heavy volume. It did break through the SMA, isn't this compression? Um, but you know, this is not something that I'm counting towards my strategy. This like if I could if I could allocate one penny to this move, I would, because I'm purely seeing how strong is this move over here and that I risk it. You can still see the value of providing these downside alerts um, as it moves lower. I could, I could get in on the bounce off of the SMA on the retest versus having to hold through the heat and then waiting for Etsy to make its move higher. So that is um, what I'm seeing here in Etsy. Um, still going to hold that as a test this SMA, but pretty much a pure spec trade. Um, don't really care what happens to it. I'm just uh, trying it out, you know, out of curiosity to, to, to test the strength of this move and learning how to trade 
some of these strong moves here. Pure gamble. Pure, pure, pure gamble. And I'm totally okay with losing on this trade. Do not care if I lose on this trade. All right. So what are some nice picks for today? Um, so I texted CLSK earlier, which ended up not being super great. Let's look at PDD. So I actually took a short here on PDD at 1245. Why 1245? We had this rejection back into the range, 1OP cross and LRSI cross. Back here, it moved a little bit lower. Um, now it's crossing up a little bit and it is um, inching a little bit higher, still pretty weak relative to the market. If my double top bias and prediction is true, then I will be correct on PDD and I should make money on the short. So took the short here. My target is this low of the day. If my market bias is correct, then I should be able to take profits on the stock. And my stop would be if it breaks above this high over here and above VWAP, we get a nice close above it. I would be out of the trade because it is a day trade. So this is one that I actually do count in my system because this is a relative strength relative weakness trade. You can see this long compression in PDD broke into the downside into the earnings gap, long red candle and heavy volume, persistent selling pressure. On the day where the market is grinding up a little bit, PDD has not been able to get above its VWAP. Now it doesn't have the strongest momentum over here. So um, I am willing to let it go and see how it does um, on this level. But I like this trade over here and I'm willing to let it retest this view app again to see if it gets some additional supply. If there's still sellers persistent at this level, then we should get a nice move lower. So this you have to give it some time. Like I mentioned on the bullish side where you can see a move up, breakout, retest, or sorry, move down to test view app, another move up to break out, retest it, and then move up higher. The same but opposite side on BDD. So that would be my pick for the day as a day trade. And let me find you guys a pick uh, on the long side if I had to give a pick. All right, everyone, I'm back. I didn't want to take up the video just scrolling through all these picks. So this is one setup that I see over here. Um, and this would be a put credit spread on snow. So if I open up the trade over here. Um, what I like about Snow, before I get into the options actually, post earning breakout, we've kind of compressed sideways here and we're trying to break up above these trend lines. Today, Snow broke above through um, some of these trend lines here, came back, tested it, tested this breakout here, and now it is finding support at this level. So for some reason it's not giving me this uh, high over here. All right, um, back to snow. So we see it, it held this breakout, or it's holding this breakout at this $200 level. Pretty choppy stock, but we have a couple of layers of support over here. We have this first layer at this breakout at 200. We have the A VWAP E on this stock here coming at about 194-ish. Then we have the uh, 50 SMA sloping up currently at 189 and it should continue to move higher. And then we have this gap, which was from this resistance in snow prior. Then it became support at that level. So we have this gap coming into play around 185. So what I like is if I can sell a snow 185, 180 put credit spread, um, I can distance myself from the action and I can get in on any pullback. So that's what I'm kind of liking here in snow. You can see the price action for today if we zoom in. It's been inching up higher as the market has been pretty much waffling around, not doing much. And you can see these long green candles from support, double bottom, lower high, and then a new high breaking out past the prior day high and nice green candle. So what I am gonna do here is I would go out to the March 1st date because that is before earnings. 
right? Earnings are on three six. And um, I would do is sell the one eighty five, and buy the one eighty. Pretty wide bid ask spread, so you are going to have to wait this one out for a while. But I believe that these levels will hold during any market pullback, and I'll get a fill. Um, and because the bid ask spreads are so wide, um, I'm going to try to go for something a little bit more aggressive than one dollar. So you want to get at least one dollar, um, and this might be a little bit too aggressive, but since we have a pretty wide spread, I'm going to put in this order and, you know, just see if I get a fill. I'm going to monitor snow on a pullback, set some alerts, maybe an LRSI, H1 alert, see if I get that. And then I will see if uh, the credit, the credit fills on this kind of stock. So let's see, uh, between the halfway point between 70 and uh, 155 is about 50 cents. 40 cents each, so let's go for 110 would be the middle. Um, let's see if we get a fill uh, on that. So that's one I like. And then another one that was called out in our chat was a GS put credit spread here. So GS, nice compression after earnings, so you have time. It's rubbing up against this resistance here, but it's pretty much been moving completely sideways, digesting all of these gains from this massive move up over here. So there are some buyers at this level. There are also some buyers at this gap, and there's some buyers at the 50 SMA at 366. So if you can get a GS put credit spread, the 365, 360, that will be a very nice one. So I'm bidding for the one um, about a month away, Feb 23rd. So if you sell the 365, you buy the 360, um, we're pretty close on this one over here. Um, right now, you can probably get it at 90 cents credit. So in any sort of market dip a little bit lower, you can get that fill. So it would probably have to drop somewhere, I don't know, to the low of the day, like 375-ish. Um, but I'd have my order out for that and see if it gets filled. Um, and then you can take advantage of this time premium decay. It also sets up really nicely for a weekly at the money. If you trade those, uh, I do not trade those, but it could be a pretty nice one to paper trade from. So I may practice a paper trading weekly at the money uh, on this position. So those are my two picks. Um, I'm going to go with the snow put credit spread pick if you get the fill. And that will be my pick for today. So I hope this was helpful and I will catch you guys all in the next video.